And now that I've been like in this discussion for uh, for a couple of years now, like I just see like I can't even imagine how you and Matt too <laughs> have been functioning <laughs> for so long because it's just like yeah, you kind of feel like you're a madman sometimes, you know? Because it's like you want to say things and you're just like, mm, nope, nobody's gonna understand what I'm saying. I'm yeah, just gonna look insane. So just gonna just buckle down and log on Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, but in a way it was, I think it was good because for the years, I would say the like almost 20 years that we were working on this on our own and thinking about it, I also was constantly trying to formulate ways to at least address this, you know, with with people. And so I feel like I found some analogies that if I'm in a, if I'm in a situation where nobody understands, I can say things, I can talk about, uh, you know, that's why I use images like the medieval village, or I try to use really concrete images of something that you can portray in your, in your right. mind so that it's not, so, it's, I'm not always talking about the abstract stuff. Uh, and right. I always try, one of the things I try to do is I, if I'm talking to somebody who doesn't know a lot about symbolism without talking about symbolism directly, what I try to do is I'll, I'll in the discussion, I'll shift between the individual and the communal level while I'm speaking. So it's like, I'm talking about something and then I'll, all of a sudden I'll switch to a higher level of, of existence right. and then, and then come back. So the person is like, Whoa, what happened? Cause I, they can see <laughs> the analogy. They can see that, okay, here's the structure. I'm talking about something. And all of a sudden I'll talk about a, a, a body in terms of a city or in terms of a, a larger being. And then, then right. I'll come back down to the person. And then maybe I'll go even higher. And so, and so it's like, I'm not, I'm not telling you about symbolism. I'm actually taking you by the hand and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take you to these little spark moments where you can see the connections yourself. Right. Hopefully that will spark your curiosity to, to then go, to then go further. But you know, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's not easy to talk about this stuff. It, it's not easy. Yeah. But it's, it's fun though. I, it's fun. Cause I also like, I try to introduce my kids to a little bit <laughs> and they're just like, sure dad. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's a, there's a good way to do it. This is how I did it with my son, especially is, if you notice a pattern in a story, then yeah. what I'm what I've done is I'll I'll tell us some fairy tales, like I'll I'll tell them some fairy tales or some stories from ancient myths or some Bible story, and then once I feel like they've heard enough stories of a with a certain pattern, mm-hmm. then I'll just say, hey, did you notice that this story has the same thing as that other story? Did you notice right. that? Like, do you notice that you know, uh, th- you, you know, the, the the easiest one is the idea of going down somewhere and coming back up you know, and you say, Hey, why is he, do you notice how they go down and come back up or that there's this movement? And so hell, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, Hey, what other story has that? Think about it. What other story has that? And then think about it. And now my son is, he's pretty good at identifying things sometimes that I didn't even notice. He'll say, he's like, Hey, oh, dad, yeah. did you notice that? And I'm like, Oh, wow. Not bad. Yeah.